Fornication. <laughs> Sorry, for an occasion <laughs> such as this. <laughs> it is best to keep the speech short, like me. The best advice I had was to make it last as long as it takes the groom to make love. Sit down then. Thanks for coming. Good night. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, before I uh, undertake the duty of giving Michael a uncomfortable few moments, it is customary, of course, to thank the bridesmaids. But we don't have any. <laughs> if we had some bridesmaids, I'm sure you would all agree that they would have looked fantastic. <laughs> and they would have all done such a wonderful job today, if there were some. <laughs> what we do have today, though, is a beautiful bride. Yay. You look stunning. I would like to pay tribute to all those who have worked so tremendously hard to put today's proceedings together at such short notice. I thought there may have been a shotgun involved in making the wedding happen so quickly. But that, I am told, is not the case. When Charlie plucked a New Year's Eve wedding out of her dreams, I am sure she could not have imagined the level of effort required to put all this together. Particular thanks must go to Charlie's parents, especially her mom and sisters. Thanks to our hosts, John and Ruth, and all the suppliers of goods and services and helpers who have made Charlie and Michael's dream become reality. A New Year's Eve wedding on the dawn of a new life for this wonderful couple. It is a huge honour for me to be asked by Michael to be best man. Michael is a very kind and considerate person. If ever any of us needed any help, we all know that Michael would come up trumps. He's tall. <laughs> Blonde, has blue eyes, is charming, and he asked me to be best man. <laughs> there is only one best man today. And it's not me. He's stood here next to Charlie. Michael spoke to me in depth about marriage while we were thrashing the frogs in France at cricket. I explained in the kindest way I could that although we were very good friends and in a most romantic setting, marriage to me was completely out of the question. <laughs> And what better way to spend your wedding morning hunting amongst such good friends and willing hounds than with the crew in West Warwickshire? <laughs> we had a super day and I was mightily relieved to see Michael in the lorry on the way home. I first met Michael many years ago when my now ex-wife <laughs> telephoned him to help her with a problem horse. Uh, did I tell you all that I was divorced? <laughs> a divorce best man. Great start. I'm sure Michael and Charlie's marriage will be vastly different from my own experiences. <laughs> I've personally had a complete change of heart about marriage. <laughs> and in the process of setting up a charitable fund for needy solicitors. Um, before Michael met Charlie, he was struggling to meet a girl who would put up with him killing pretty birds and lovely ginger furry mammals. He was sick of meeting fox feeders unless they were doing it for a valid reason, which in Michael's book resulted in the certain demise of the aforementioned creature. 
Michael was in a void that resulted in excessive drinking and partying at the cricket club in the Golden Arms. His salvation came through the internet, or as Michael calls it, Tinterweb thingy. On Tinterweb there is a dating website with a shopping list where you can tick all of your requirements. He started licking Sorry, ticking the boxes. <laughs> and Michael's quest had begun. All Michael wanted was a gorgeous looking girl who also had the same appetite for killing animals. Uh, someone sympathetic to him when he has to cancel their much planned night out due to haymaking. Someone who understands that summer Wednesday nights usually end with him staggering into the house at 2 a.m. in his cricket whites. <laughs> so salvation for this wonderful couple was found on Tinterweb Thingy. <laughs> and these two here have the rest of their lives before them. In Charlie's words, the booking fee for the website was the best 10 pounds she had spent. <laughs> will be released in hardback <laughs> and I will do a signing. By the way, you can't even get a haircut for £10 these days. You know? <laughs> Incidentally, um, I use the internet a lot. <laughs> uh, but so many of the pictures of women I see are quite unsettling and surely not worthy of discussion tonight. <laughs> We had a wonderful stag weekend in Bristol. Michael was handed a blow-up doll by me at the start of the weekend called Philippa. He was told that he must look after her like a wife and she should never leave his side during the weekend. Alas, poor Philippa was hurled off a balcony in a nightclub. Stabbed by a jealous love rival with a kebab stick and had her nipple bitten off, which caused instant deflation. She was then left for dead in the streets of Bristol. Later on, Mickey Harris phoned us to tell us he had found Philippa in a dustbin. What on earth he was doing in the bin will remain a mystery. I have spoken to Michael and informed him that this is no way to treat a lady. And can assure Charlie's parents that he did take my comments on board. The, fol the following morning, we filtered off home after breakfast. As we drove up to Soldens, Michael's phone rang and it was Mickey Harris. He asked if they were still serving breakfast in the hotel. He was still in bed in Bristol and had been left behind. Sorry mate. Michael has many friends in all walks of life. Fox hunting is his greatest passion, followed by farming, fighting fires, shooting and cricket. He has made many lifelong friends along the way and there will be many disappointed girls out there knowing that he has gone away. <laughs> Michael and Charlie must remain, remain friends at all times. But Charlie, if he does misbehave, you could always threaten him with fitting a set of breathing apparatus and performing a crush test on him. In his own words, his worst nightmare. <laughs> Michael is an excellent singer, and these following words from one of his own songs sum him up totally. You have a home, and friends as well. Families that, family that are always there. A life full of fun, that's never dull. With people who really care. So it now gives me immense pleasure to invite you all to stand up once more, and raise your glasses in a toast to love, laughter and a happy ever after to Michael and Charlotte
That's it. Thank you.